I can have your attention. I want you to stop what you're working on. Go ahead and minimize um, anything that's on your computers so that I have your undivided attention. Today we're going to begin our exploration of employability skills and we're going to talk about um, why those skills are important. We're going to um, distinguish what some of those skills are. We're going to learn some examples of what good employability skills look like and what poor employability skills look like. And we're going to talk about why those are important in the workplace to employers. So because this program has both dual enrolled high school students and adult students, um, everyone can kind of relate to this and everyone at some point, if you don't already have a job, is going to have a job in this field and you're going to need these employability skills for you to be successful and for employers to want to hire you and for you to have a long-standing relationship with that company and be able to advance and go to other places. Um, that's how important employability skills are. So who can tell me what they think employability skills are? Hey, okay, Andrew. Skills that make you marketable towards an employer. Skills that make you marketable towards an employer. That's good. Okay. Can somebody give me a little bit more specific, maybe? Okay, Jackson. Skills that an employer is really looking for for that kind of like job. Okay. So do you think they're more technical or do you think they're more general? General. They okay. That's good. They are general, so you're on the right track. Um, anybody else want to take a go for it? Yes, Ruben. Sometimes uh, when I think of employability skills, I mean some things are just acquired and some things you just have. Like general, like you can be honest, trustworthy, something like that along those lines. Okay. So skills that maybe just are a part of your. Demeanor. Demeanor. Your, so do you think employability skills can't be learned then? Well, you can acquire uh, okay. uh, uh, employability skills. So okay. Yes. Some come naturally, some are because of what you've seen displayed by mentors, whether it be older family members or people that you worked with, that kind of thing. Okay. So let's talk about employability <laughs> skills and what they are. Employability skills are called many different things. You may have heard them called employability skills. They are also referred to as employment skills, transferable skills, soft skills, personal and, and interpersonal skills, work readiness skills, or foundation skills. So they are skills that you're going to need at any job you're at. It doesn't matter if you're working at the drive-thru at McDonald's or if you are an IT executive for a big company, um, employability skills are something that you're going to use anywhere you go and everywhere you go. And it's going to determine how successful you are in the workplace. So they are a set of general skills and behaviors that are necessary to be successful in the workplace. So what I'm going to do, I have a puzzle activity. And I'm going to give out three of the major um, employability skills. And then there are three other parts that could be also another skill, but it kind of goes with this major skill, or it could be an example. And we're going to put together, I've got three rows, so I've got three puzzles. Each row is going to do a puzzle. So, um, Andrew, I'm going to give you this piece, and you three, um, Jackson and Christopher, you will work with Andrew. You have your first piece of the puzzle. And yours is dependability, okay? And Ruben, your teams or your rows puzzle is integrity. And Mary, yours and Marquise will be professionalism. So Caleb and Connor, y'all go ahead and work with Ruben there. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna call out one and y'all are gonna decide if you think that belongs to your puzzle or not, okay? So punctuality. Who thinks that punctuality belongs to their puzzle? Okay, you think so, Andrew? And yes. what's yours again? Dependability. Dependability. So would everybody agree that punctuality would probably fall in line with being dependable? Yes. Okay, so let's see if that piece of puzzle fits. All right, and what about initiative? 
initiative. And we can we can pass on it and come back to it. What is it? Was integrity. 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 Y'all, what was y'all's, Mary? Professionalism. So initiative. Do we think initiative falls more under professionalism, um, integrity, or dependability? Jackson? I think dependability. You think that one falls under dependability? How did I, how did I get two back to back? I thought I scrambled <laughs> these things. See if that piece fits. Okay, what about respect for self and others? Respect for self and no, others. No, you think it belongs on integrity? Which one? Which one? Professionalism. Or professionalism. What do y'all think? Give me a vote. Integrity or professionalism? Who says yeah, professionalism? Y'all think professionalism? Okay, try it out, Mary, and see if that piece fits in your puzzle. Right. Follow and comply with policies. Follow and comply with policies. Is that one's here now? You think? think you think that's part of integrity? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah, I do. And we're going to discuss that a little bit in just a minute. How about... <laughs> Admit mistakes. Admit mistakes. Okay. Caleb, that you think that's integrity? Okay. Professional dress. Yeah. Think that goes with professionalism? That's kind of almost a dead giveaway, isn't it? Okay. What about positive attitude? Positive attitude. Think professionalism? Boy, I've hit them two back to back, too. All right. What about responsibility? Uh, dependability. Dependability. Responsibility. Okay. And our last one is tell the truth. Yep. Integrity. Okay. Good deal. So put your puzzles together so that we can see them laid out on your desk. And now we're actually going to talk about each one of those. So we're going to talk about the examples of employability skills that we just did with our puzzles. Our first one was dependability. Who can tell me what their kind of definition would be for dependability? Ruben? Um, just to know that you're going to be on time. Anytime that you receive a phone call, you're going to answer that you're going to be there and they'll be there. And Basically, if you're dependable, they're calling on you for a reason. They're you, counting on they're you, counting aren't they? On. Good. Okay, so you can be counted on mm -hmm. if you're dependable. Um, I like that you pointed out if they call you, because a lot of times employees are maybe off the clock, but are on call, and the fact that you answer the phone really does mean you're dependable. If you look at your phone and say, oh, I know that's who, that, that's my employer, I'm not answering um, because I really don't feel like going in today, then, you know, are you dependable? It's, if that alone maybe doesn't make you undependable, but it sure is going to change how that employer feels if they know every time they call you, you're not going to answer, or every time they call you, you are going to answer, or at least a good percentage of the time when they call you, you are going to answer. And if you don't answer, maybe you call them back, that kind of thing. So that's going to influence that. So when we talk about dependability, we said that punctuality is definitely a employability skill that kind of goes along with being dependable. Um, give me an example, a positive example of being punctual. Anybody? Arriving to work on time. Arriving to work on time. Okay. So, what time do we open the door every morning here? Eight. We open it at eight. Seven fifty-five. We open the door at seven fifty-five, and what time does class start? Eight. eight. Okay. Why do we open the door at seven fifty-five? Make sure all on time. To make sure that you're ready to start work at 8 o'clock, right? That that makes you punctual. Now, if you don't get here at 7.55, does that make you not punctual? No. What if you get here at 7.58, but you're in your seat, you're ready to work at 8 o'clock? You're still, you're still punctual, right? Okay, so punctuality is important. Um, if you're constantly late to work, that is going to be negatively looked upon. Um, you may be passed over for promotions. 
You may have certain projects that aren't given to you. Um, you may not be involved in things that involve meetings because they figure if you can't get to work on time, you're sure not going to make it to a meeting on time, right? Okay, so punctuality is very important. And basically that means be on time, all right? And then we talked about responsibility. So kind of somebody give me their take on what does responsibility mean? Caleb, can you give me a, what you think about responsibility? If a person's responsible, what does that mean to you? They uh, handle their power with care. Very good. I like that. They handle their power with care. They're responsible. Okay. I'm going to give you a shorter little definition that says they're accountable. And I think handling their power with care is a very good example of being accountable. You are accountable for your actions. You're accountable for what you do. And you want to make sure that if you have the power that you're, do, you're being responsible with that power and you're not misusing it, right? So you're being accountable. Um, if you do something wrong, you want to make sure that you take credit for it at the same time you take credit for doing something great, right? Okay. Another um, skill that falls under here is initiative. What do we mean when we say initiative? Marquis, do you know? Do what now? Perfect. Not having to be asked to do something. If the paper runs out on the printer and a student automatically takes the initiative to look in the cabinet, find a new pack of paper, put some paper in the printer, and then take the paper and put it back in the cabinet, what's left of it, that's initiative. You did that without anybody asking you to do it. An initiative will be well appreciated in the workplace. Um, employers are always looking for people that will take the initiative. And there's some things you're not going to want to do without asking. You know, you might want to say, Miss Skipper, the printer's out of paper. Is it okay if I put some in it? Um, you don't have to do that because you know how to do that. But in the workplace, there might be things that you feel like you can help with and that you have the initiative to do it, but you might need permission first from an employer to do it. So if there's ever any, you know, question mark there, you always want to make sure you ask first. But initiative is something that employers are excited about. They're excited when um, employees come to work, ready to work, and looking for um, things to do, ways to help, things to help them, ways to help the business be successful. Okay? So, and that's what initiative is. It's seeking to improve, helping get things done, volunteering, um, helping to make the business better. All right, so the next one was professionalism. And Mary and Marquise, y'all had this one. So under professionalism, um, who can tell me just in general how they would describe professionalism? A way a person carries themselves. A way a person carries themselves, okay? That can mean, well, it can mean a lot of things. It's not just the way you dress, right? No. Okay, so let's talk about this. Let's give the first example there. A positive attitude. Um, if you are a negative Nelly, nothing's ever right, everything's always wrong, poor pitiful me, you know, is that something that an employer wants to see and hear every day? Is that something that you as a fellow employee want to see and hear every day? No. Okay? So for a positive attitude, we would say, leave it at the door. Does everybody have at some point in their life a bad day? Okay, at some point we get up on the wrong side of the bed, the alarm clock doesn't go off on time and we've rushed, our children um, or our parents or our siblings have done something to aggravate us before we left to go to work and just sometimes it's just a bad day, you know, but leave it at the door. Nobody else at your workplace should know that you're having a bad day and what the cause of that bad day was. So leave it at the door. That's a good recommendation. Professional dress. So we said that was kind of a no-brainer. Professional dress, professionalism. Um, but professional dress takes on many different 
forms. It can be the suit and tie with the dress shoes. It can be just a nice button-up shirt um, with a nice pair of pants. It can be um, just a polo collar shirt with a pair of khakis. It kind of depends on the job you're in as to what the professional dress for that job is. I would go a little further there and I would say a clean and neat appearance according to the dress code, okay? Neat and clean, that means your clothes have been washed, they're not wrinkled, they don't look like you slept in them. You, if you have facial hair, it's well taken care of, shaved, you know, looking nice and neat, not scraggly looking. Um, if you um, have long hair, it would be making sure that it's pulled back away from your face, that it looks like you brushed it before you came to work. Whether you have short hair or long hair, you want to make sure you look like you brushed your hair before you came to work. Um, keeping it clean, washing it regularly so you don't look oily, um, those kinds of things. Those go along with that professional appearance. Okay, anybody have anything to that that they want to add or does that pretty well cover it? That covers it? That covers it? Okay. So, respect for self and others. Respect for self and others. What do you think that means? The way you carry yourself. Okay. Keep yourself the way you carry yourself. Yeah. The way you treat others. Treat others. Treat others. Um, How you want to be treated. Yeah. Can the way you dress show oh, yeah. whether you have respect for yourself and others? Yeah. It can. If, um, you know, we talk a lot about females in the workplace and about being conservative. Um, you know, you don't want to wear low cut blouses, that kind of thing. Um, and honestly, that kind of goes even with men in the workplace, too. You know, you'll see men that will sometimes want to wear their, you know, button up shirt unbuttoned three or four down. And um, maybe they've got a lot of chest hair they're trying to, you know, expose for people to see. So having respect for others means being conservative about your dress, um, as well as um, staying away from gossip, avoiding foul language, using caution with oversharing. Remember I said leave it at the door? You don't have to come in and tell everybody why you're in a bad mood and that you know, this happened and maybe, you know, your um, spouse or significant other has done something to hurt you. Just sometimes oversharing is a bit much. Sometimes it's best just to keep it to yourself. If you have somebody you're a friend with and you go to lunch and you want to talk to them about it, that's fine. But um, try to keep it out of the workplace. So also don't talk about work on social media. If you've gotten mad at your boss at work, don't go home and blow up social media with how horrible your boss is, okay? Or how horrible the company you work for is. That's a good way to lose a job, but what's on social media stays on social media, whether you delete it or not, there's a track of it. And you may be 10 years down the road and decide you want to change employers and somehow they have given them been given access to this comment that you made about your employer and they're like oh i don't like that that kind of you know stings a little bit what would they say about me what would they say about our company so just be really mindful of those things all right the last one is integrity and we talked about telling the truth we talked about following and complying with policies um, remember, we talked about at the beginning of the year about the computer policies, what you can and can't do on the computers, that kind of thing. Well, in the workplace, you're going to have policies too. Make sure you follow and comply with policies. That is a very strong attribute of integrity. And then admit mistakes. Oops, didn't need to go there. Okay, so admit mistakes. Um, always be willing to be accountable. Admit when you've made a mistake, admit when you're wrong. Don't lie about it. Tell the truth no matter what. Even if it causes you to be written up in your job, always tell the truth. That's a part of integrity. Remember also that you get graded every day on your employability skills. We look at our attendance, our attitude, our dress, and our work ethics. And so that tells you how important employability is in the workplace. And employers are looking for these kinds of things. They're looking at what previous employers and previous teachers 
say about you so that they can get a feel for the type of employability skills that you have. Whether you are a person with strong integrity, whether you are a dependable person, a punctual person. Remember I tell you it's important to treat this like a job because one day you may want me to give you a letter of recommendation for a job. And if you were late for school every day, what am I going to tell this employer? I'm not going to lie because I'm going to have integrity. Um, so you want to make sure that you're always um, very aware of what the employability skills are and that you start putting those skills to work while you're in the program so that when you go out into the workforce that you have those skills and you can just embellish them then. Okay? All right, so what we're going to do now is a writing assignment. And I'm going to pass the writing assignment out. If you will, pull up a Word document on your computer screen there. And I'm also going to give you a rubric that tells you how this is going to be graded. Okay, so if you will go ahead and start your writing assignment, we will be um, writing about what you think your strongest employability skill is and you're going to provide me an example of that and how you demonstrated that skill. You're going to identify what you think your weakest employability skill is, and you're going to describe a plan for improving that skill. You're also going to describe what you believe is the most important employability skill and give an example of that skill being demonstrated in an outstanding manner and in a poor manner. That doesn't mean that you've done it poorly, but it means that you know what a poor demonstration of that would be. Explain why employability skills are important to employers and explain why an employer would want to hire you. So you're going to have about five paragraphs. They don't have to be crazy long. You just have to make sure you cover the content in each of the five bullets, okay? You can do it all in one paragraph or you can break it out into five paragraphs, one for each bullet. That's up to you. Just make sure you cover the criteria. Also remember I'm checking for spelling grammar, punctuation, capitalization, those kinds of things, okay? Because those skills also are important in the workplace. That's part of communication, both written and oral. So we want to make sure, um, and we kind of have a little tool there since we use Microsoft Word that helps us out with those things. And when you're in the workplace, you're going to have those uh, tools available to you then as well, even within email. So always, um, Check for spelling, check for grammar, check for punctuation, but then reread what you're sending before you send it so that it, we know it's complete sentences and it makes sense. How many of you have sent an email and then read it and think, oh my goodness, I left the whole thought out there? So it can happen, okay? I'm going to give you time to work on that now. I'll be circling around, and if you have questions, I'll be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Um, remember, you do have your puzzle that you can kind of glance at there. And if you would like for me to go back to um, any of the other skills, I'll be glad to go back. I'm going to go ahead and... I think we all know what integrity is, so maybe... Let me just end the show and go back to where I want to go. I'll put dependability up there. If anybody wants me to pop professionalism up there, I can do that while you're writing. Um, or integrity. 